final spot, we have iReefs MW2 Montage number 5. Because iReefs dropped this montage in 2010. Back then, when nobody was even hitting anything close to something like this, video was over. Here we are, nearly five years later, iReefs is still killing the fucking game. Honestly, he's probably one of the most talented players like there was. But never worked out. Never be as good as iReefs. iReefs will always be, in my opinion, the best sniper in Call of Duty. Then we got the elusive and mythical creature that is Irips. Is it a girl? Is it many people? Is it an early AI robot? There's this girl that came out to be like, say, hey, yo, all these pictures that are on Irips' channel, that's not her or them, that's me, and I'm not Irips. Came Irips. out and said that it was a fake and Irips is a guy. Reeps though, on the other hand, no one really knows. It could just be all the Reaper or it could be another individual. I love Reaps. Played a lot of with. Uh, played a lot of games of Reaps. But Reaps never had a mic. And to this day, obviously, there's if you know, there's controversy surrounding: is Reaps a female, or is it a geezer? Personally, I have no idea. I don't know. Call of Duty is one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time. Hundreds of millions of copies have been sold, and it has played a substantial role in the lives of millions of young people. It was this franchise that gave rise to the increasing popularity of gaming content on YouTube. Most of YouTube's biggest gaming stars originally started out making videos on Call of Duty. Alongside this video making industry, there exist many other communities on the game, such as the trickshotting community, the zombies community, and the montage making community, the subject of this video. Making montages in general isn't very lucrative, so the people in this community grind the games out solely because of their passion for their craft. There was a time in Call of Duty history where one person was on top of both the video making industry and the more niche montage making community. This person has left behind such a remarkable legacy that many consider this individual to be one of the most extraordinary gamers of all time. Who is this person? What makes this person so remarkable? And could this person truly be one of the most extraordinary gamers of all time? Or is this phrase over exaggerated? This is the story of I Reaps. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, released in 2007, is perhaps the most important entry of the entire franchise. It completely revolutionized the shooter genre with its smooth controls and fast-paced gameplay. Console players were no longer limited in displaying their skill by clunky controls and enormous maps with static gameplay. Of all the weapon classes, the snipers are most affected by these changes. They scoped in very fast, could be fired from the hip, killed in one shot most of the time, and could be fired almost instantly after recovering from a sprint. In the hands of a limited group of incredibly skilled players, the snipers could be turned into entirely different weapons. Naturally, people started to record their gameplay and save their best moments. These moments would be uploaded, edited to a song, creating a montage. In the beginning, these montages were very rudimentary. The clips weren't organized, the edit was very simple, and people overall didn't pour a lot of creativity into the videos. But this all changed in the fall of 2008, when Zergris uploaded The Matrix. This video had it all. Gris had saved all his most impressive clips he hit that year. It was edited together amazingly well, and it was the first time a Call of Duty montage had a clear theme and character. The legendary status and influence of this video cannot be overstated. Virtually all of the very first Call of Duty content creators on YouTube were all directly or indirectly inspired by Grizz to record their gameplay. It also spawned a separate community of young players who wanted to save their highlights with the sniper rifle and create montages like Zero Grizz did. One of these players was I Reeps.
Reeps' channel was created in March 2009, and videos were being uploaded immediately. The first videos were very basic montages, where the clips were recorded by simply pointing a camera at a TV, though this would quickly change. In July 2009, Reeps' first proper montage was uploaded, which was called Cursed. Most of the clips in this video were recorded with an actual capture device, and a lot more effort was put into the edit. Reeps was heavily inspired by the montage Genocide from iBlackouts. Like Blackouts, Reeps tried to make the edit go as hard as possible, and used heavier music, diverging from the trend Gris started of using regular rock music. The majority of the clips in Cursed were hit in sniper lobbies, which are lobbies consisting only of people going for montage clips, running to the same spot on the map over and over again. Clips hit in these lobbies are therefore inherently less impressive, and even looked down upon by some. This will be important later on. But a fair amount of clips were hit in normal lobbies, where Reaps' fast and extremely accurate playstyle is already shining through, like in this Chinatown clip. <laughs> In this time period, Reeps became known amongst other snipers, not just for being a player who could consistently top scoreboards, but also for being a girl. It seemed unlikely that one of the most formidable snipers back then happened to also be the only female player at the time, especially since Reeps never talked in game. But if you'd ask someone who knew Reeps, they would always confirm that it was indeed a girl from the UK named Ashley, who was the person behind the account. And you can find pictures of her all over the channel. Furthermore, Reeps' boyfriend, X Darkness, was also a sniper in the community. As a result of all this, there was a lot of speculation and controversy surrounding Reeps after this was spread. Everyone now knew of I Reeps. While this attention grew, Reeps started to drift away from sniper lobbies and started recording for her next montage, Curves V2, in regular lobbies. Only four months later, in November 2009, Reeps finished Curves V2. The video was uploaded to Top Notch Multimedia, the main hub for all the best sniper montages at the time. Cursed V2 was a fantastic video. Most other snipers played sniper lobbies exclusively, and the ones that didn't could not pull off the clips that Reeps was hitting on a regular basis. I think at this point I need to shed some light on how we judge what a clip is. The most prevalent way is to look at the kill feed in the bottom left corner. It typically displays 4 kills from players at a time, and can extend up to 7. If you get 4 uninterrupted kills in a short time frame, the entire kill feed will show your gamer tag only, as an objective display of your domination. We call this a quad feed, and if it was hit with nice shots, it would usually make its way into a montage. <laughs> The second type of clip is based on the points appearing on screen. If you get multiple kills in very rapid succession, the points on screen will stack. So if you kill 4 people very quickly, the points will stack to a plus 20 or a plus 40 depending on the game type. You have a very short time window after the first kill to get a second for it to stack. So plus 20s for example are generally a lot more impressive than quad feeds. Do note that there are many other ways to judge clips by, and that these standards are not absolute. A quad feed can be complete garbage, and a clip that doesn't adhere to any standards can still be very worthy of being in a montage. For Curse V2, Reeps was able to get multiple plus 20s, as well as some very clean quad feeds, which not many other players could do in normal lobbies. Looking back, the video really was ahead of its time. Most players back then had only been playing Call of Duty for about a year, so most playstyles were visibly clunky and stiff. Reeps, on the other hand, moves in a very organic and fluent way, and while doing so is able to kill multiple people with a shot that in some cases just looks robotic. Away, 
The edit was again very heavy in typical Reap's fashion, and the description of the video confirms that it was indeed a girl who was behind all these clips. This all was more than enough to put Reap's on the map for everyone, and the channel grew to over 1400 subscribers, a considerable amount at the time. Which was a really good thing, because the next Call of Duty in the series, Modern Warfare 2, was just about to drop. The release of Modern Warfare 2 was the start of yet another very important year in the gaming community. The game sold outstandingly well and introduced many new people to the franchise. I think many people have fond memories of grinding this game out late into the night, playing private matches at a friend's house, and generally enjoying life without as many responsibilities. As a result of the increasing popularity, the content making side of YouTube started to really take off with this game. The channel Machinima Respawn started handing out contracts to people who wanted to make Call of Duty videos for them, so uploading Call of Duty content started to become a viable source of income for some. But the old generation snipers were pretty divided on this game. The game was, aesthetically and mechanically, a very different game than the one they had played and enjoyed for the past two years. Adaptation was required, and not many people continued to make montages. I Reaps was not amongst these. In fact, Reaps was about to have what was probably the most extraordinary year of any player in the world during that time. Reaps started to grind for clips the moment the game was released, and already put out three montages before the end of 2009. When a new Call of Duty is released, everyone always wants to see someone who is already very skilled at the game and getting insane clips and streaks, so the videos that Reaps was putting out were actually getting a ton of views. The channel was also being advertised in very questionable ways, which resulted in even more attention. A few months into the year, Reaps' second Modern Warfare 2 montage had surpassed Curse V2 in terms of views, so Reaps' channel was actually outperforming Top Notch Multimedia, the big hub for montages. In April 2010, the fame would reach unprecedented levels when Reaps released Modern Warfare 2 Montage 4. This montage is truly something special. After releasing three montages back to back in December, Reap stopped making new montages for four months to record for this, and it showed. The clips were simply amazing. Reap's hit three five on screens for this video, which is when you get not just four, but five uninterrupted kills in the kill feed. The kill feeds will display five kills in this event, which even today is no easy feat to pull off. The first squad, or 4 kills in one shot, Reaps ever hit was also in this montage, and the build up for it was pulled off extremely well. <laughs> Lastly, Reaps hit an intervention multi kill with the thermal sight in a completely random spot on Favela which is one of the clips that newer Modern Warfare 2 players have later remarked on to be insane for its time. All in all, this montage was truly amazing, and was the highest rated gaming video that month. It would reach the 1 million view milestone that same year, and even today is one of the most viewed montages of all time. Soon after Montage 4, Reap started uploading previews for a big jewel touch that she was doing with her boyfriend, X Darkness. Like I said earlier, there was always controversy surrounding Reap's real identity, but this year Reap's uploaded a few videos of herself, and in August, Reap's and Darkness had done their first ever jewel commentary. Reap's, are you ever getting a PS triple? I wish I could, but I can't. Do you use Turtle Beaches with FPX? At this point, either Reaps was actually a girl, or it was a very elaborate lie. In any case, most fans started to buy into it now. A few months passed, and on September 12, 2010, 
Reaps and Darkness released their dual tosh, Ascendancy. This montage blew everyone's expectations out of the water. It was a 10 minute long masterpiece with an amazing and heavy soundtrack and clips that were simply ahead of everyone else's skill level at the time. Reeps' edit on the video is also one of Reeps' finest works. Surprisingly enough, Darkness really managed to hold his own against Reeps. His movement and accuracy really show a decent mastery of the game and some of his clips are really impressive, like this 5 on screen on High Rise with the Barrett Thermal. Of course, Reap still manages to one-up him with his insane Invasion 5 on screen. Reaps also hit a quad feed consisting only of headshots, or a quad headshot feed, being one of the first to do so on Modern Warfare 2. Today, it is hailed as one of the best and most influential montages of all time. The way this video was edited and the selection of songs became the inspiration and blueprint of many montages that would be released in the upcoming years. I personally regard this as one of the few perfect montages ever created. After the Ascendancy hype had died down, the release of Call of Duty Black Ops, the new entry in the franchise, was just around the corner. But Reaps wasn't done with Modern Warfare 2 yet. After recording for only a month and a half, Reaps released Modern Warfare 2 Montage 5, which was, yet again, mind-blowing at the time. The montage has a perfect balance of streak-related clips and multi-kills, and quad feeds with crazy accuracy, sometimes even combining the two, like in this terminal clip. While the soundtrack is kind of boring in my opinion, and is not my favorite Reaps video from that time period, it is all in all a perfect conclusion to the amazing year that Reaps had on Modern Warfare 2. Towards the end of the year, Reaps had a mass and enormous amount of subscribers for a gaming channel, and was the only person in the gaming community that could make videos that would near or even surpass the million view mark so consistently. Looking back on the videos now, I seriously doubt that there was anyone more talented at Call of Duty than Reaps during that time. Many of the montages released in that year have all pretty much become cult classics and have a ridiculous amount of views now. Reaps was undeniably on top of the game that year. The question now was if this was maintainable. Call of Duty Black Ops was about to release, which was made by Treyarch, a different studio than Infinity Ward, who is in charge of the Modern Warfare series. Treyarch is notorious for making games that are punishing towards snipers, so their games are typically less popular for montages. Sadly, Black Ops proved to be no different. 
The snipers aimed in off-center for a short time after scoping in, which is practically a death sentence for quick scoping. Reeps tried valiantly to hit some impressive montage clips, but ultimately gave up on the game after only releasing a few short montages in the first month or so. Reeps wouldn't abandon the franchise entirely though, and went back to the old familiar Modern Warfare 2. Only a few months after the release of Black Ops, Reeps announced that she was making another Modern Warfare 2 montage, Ascendancy V2, which would this time be a solo tosh, since Darkness had quit playing earlier that year. Despite Modern Warfare 2 not being the current Call of Duty anymore, the hype was still there, and only two months later the actual video would be released. Once again, this video was groundbreaking at the time. After the sniping flop, that was Black Ops, I think everyone was in the mood for some good old Modern Warfare 2 sniping destruction. Reeps' playstyle was getting increasingly more aggressive, which makes for very entertaining clips of course. The montage contained several 5 on screens and had a perfectly executed edit to top it all off. But the real crowning jewel of this montage was a clip at the very end that has now become legendary. Earlier in this video I explained briefly how the kill feed works and how it can be used when judging a clip. The kill feed has 4 permanent spots and typically extends to 5 if a 5th kill is earned in that time frame. However, it is possible to have the kill feed extend to 6 kills if, by some miracle, after getting a quad feed, you find two more people and kill them simultaneously with one bullet, all while no one else in the game interrupts the kill feed by getting kills of their own. Having six of your kills displayed is called a six on screen and is an extremely rare occurrence. Many players go their entire career playing thousands of hours and not hit a single six on screen. Certainly, in 2011, this was simply unheard of, yet in April of 2011, at the climax of the Ascendancy V2 closing section, this is the clip we saw. It is undoubtedly one of the most iconic and legendary clips ever hit. It was a true testament to how far ahead Reeps was of everyone else during that time. Even today, people hold this clip in the highest regard. Despite all this praise, looking back I personally find Ascendancy V2 to be somewhat overrated. Reeps probably hit the high rise 6 on screen as one of the first clips for this and wanted to showcase it as soon as possible. The montage overall feels very rushed. Many of the clips were hit in the demolition game mode, where the spawns pretty much never swap, so you can spawn trap and hit clips till your heart's content. The soundtrack is also pretty boring and generic, since the first song was used in a big montage a few months before, and the second song is from the same band, and literally plays right after the first on the actual album. As a result from all this, the middle part of this montage, while having some genuinely great moments, is pretty filler. The strength of this video really only comes from that one amazing clip. After AV2, Reap stayed relatively quiet during 2011, only uploading short Modern Warfare 2 videos and one more big video, the best of iReaps, containing all the best and mostly old Modern Warfare 2 clips hit by Reaps, which was uploaded on a new channel. This video was, symbolically, his farewell to Modern Warfare 2, which was a final goodbye this time, because the next Call of Duty to release was Modern Warfare 3, made of course by Infinity Ward, the studio favored by most snipers. 
The fate of the sniping world was in good hands, and surely this would reignite the hype around iReaps. The first two Modern Warfare games were completely groundbreaking and revolutionized the gaming world as we know it. Because of this, Modern Warfare 3 had some gigantic shoes to fill and expectations that were probably a bit too unrealistic. It released November 8th, 2011, and I think everyone agrees that, despite it being a perfectly fine and fun game to play, it fell short on those expectations and was unsurprisingly not as groundbreaking as the first entries. Reaps uploaded a few short montages in the first few weeks of the game's release that were consequently not that special, since the recording time was so short. The gaming landscape as a whole was also undergoing some fundamental changes. Uploading gameplay without commentary, even in the form of a montage, was starting to become less and less popular. To get big on YouTube now, you needed to incorporate your personality into your videos. Reaps, despite being very active in message form, never commentated over her gameplay, with the exception of the one infamous dual commentary with X Darkness. I think as a result of both these changes and Reaps' indifference towards Modern Warfare 3, Reaps stopped making videos. Although a formal statement was never made, it was pretty much clear that Reaps was done with Call of Duty. As one of the last snipers from the top-notch multimedia days still around, Reaps at last quit Call of Duty, having had one of the most successful lifespans of any Call of Duty YouTuber ever. To anyone watching Reaps videos at the time, it seemed that the iReaps story was over, but anyone who is around today knows that that is not the case. In fact, the story had only just begun. Even though Reaps stopped making new videos, controversy around the identity of this person was in full swing. Most of this started when Optic Midnight, who is also a female sniper, uploaded a video with her opinion on Reaps. Midnight was mostly annoyed that she was constantly being compared to I Reaps, and in the video she said that she was very skeptical that Reaps was actually a girl, since Reaps never made any proper commentaries. People started to scour the internet to find out if the girl in the pictures on Reaps' channel could be linked to iReaps in any way. Eventually, the pictures were traced back to a girl, who was not named Ashley, but Chantelle, who lived in Australia, not England. A friend of Chantelle informed her that her pictures were all over someone's YouTube channel, and on February 24th, 2012, Chantelle would upload one of the most infamous and legendary videos in the history of the community in response to all this. Hi, my name is Chantal. Um, a few of you have asked me to upload a video of myself to prove that I am Chantal. Um, the Australian girl, not this fake I reached person who has been stealing my photos. So just to let you all know that I'm Chantal, not this I reached person. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. After almost three years, it was finally confirmed that iReaps was not the person that was advertised on the channel, and probably not actually a girl. Chantelle flagged all the videos that were stolen from her, and they were subsequently taken down from Reaps' channel. Midnight made a follow-up video explaining the situation, and X Darkness confirmed that iReaps was in fact a guy, and made a video admitting that he was paid to go along with the whole thing. Sadly, both Midnight's and Darkness' videos have now been privated. After the scandal, it was clear that Reaps' time as a sniper was up. He made two more short videos in 2012 and did not make a return for the new Call of Duty, Black Ops 2. He also completely stopped interacting with his fans and was for all intents and purposes now retired. 2012 was also the dawn of a new era for montage making. Call of Duty clans like FaZe and Soar were starting to become incredibly popular and made videos that catered to a more mainstream audience. A different and more niche part of the community kept making montages in the old-fashioned way. These montages would generally get a lot less views, but are in my opinion typically better and far more authentic. In any case, far more people started to grind for clips and make montages now. Some of these new players, like Pomage, Loey, and 87F, were ridiculously good at Call of Duty, and started to make Modern Warfare 2 montages that would rival or even surpass Reeves' videos. Come 2013, the scene had changed completely. 
Playstyles had improved, standards for montages were raised, and people had higher expectations of top players. It's not uncommon at all for older generation players to stop playing after standards have improved so much, since it can be very hard to adapt. Therefore, it wasn't surprising that Reaps didn't make a return. To everyone's surprise though, someone else did make a return. In June of 2013, XDarkness uploaded a video teasing his upcoming Modern Warfare 2 montage, Ascendancy V3. The first Ascendancy was Reaps and Darkness, the second was just Reaps, so this entry would be just Darkness. I think at first, most people were skeptical that this montage would actually release. It's pretty common for players to upload a teaser for a big montage to get a quick fix of attention, only for them to never make the actual video. But over the next few months, Darkness would be very active on his YouTube channel, uploading mini tashes consistently where you could see that he had improved considerably on Modern Warfare 2. It seemed very likely that this video was actually going to happen, and based on what we had seen so far, it really seemed that Darkness was still able to hang with the new Modern Warfare 2 players. On September 12th, 2013, three years after the original Ascendancy, Ascendancy V3 was uploaded on Reeps' channel. This was a huge shock for everyone. While Reaps appeared to be inactive, he was actually still playing Modern Warfare 2 on a secret account. The clips in this video from both players are absolutely ludicrous. Reaps has some crazy 5 on screens with the intervention in this video, but Darkness actually outperforms him with some of the craziest Modern Warfare 2 clips we had ever seen. Like this Invasion Intervention 5 on. This Barrett 5 on on one of the worst and slowest playing maps of all time. And this high rise 6 on screen. The soundtrack is the best and heaviest one we've ever seen on a Reaps video, and the edit is in my opinion Reaps' best edit ever. Yeah! 
Reeps used this video to finally formally announce that this was his goodbye and that he has quit YouTube, making this a bittersweet event. All in all, the entire community was blown away that day and the hype around it was immense. Once the hype had died down, however, and people started to view the montage more objectively, the video started to fall apart. First of all, a ton of Reeps' clips were hit in sniper lobbies on his iReeps gamer tag. As I said earlier, in sniper lobbies, people run to the same spot over and over again, making clips easy to hit. For Reeps it's even easier though, because all the snipers know of him and are fans of him, so when they face him in game they often don't try to kill him, so Reeps can hit his clips and they can appear in the montages. In a large portion of the clips, you can really tell that these kids are just following Reeps around and letting him kill them. Reeps did play on a secret account in normal lobbies for a large part of the clips as well, so these clips should be fine. I don't think this is the case though. Barring the awful quality they were recorded in, I've always felt that these clips are sketchy. In this Rundown 5 one for example, these kids are just standing around doing nothing, which is not what a typical Modern Warfare 2 lobby looks like. The amount of intervention 5 ons Reeps hit for this seems a bit too good to be true, given the recording time, which enforces the idea that some of these clips might be set up. Although I must admit that I have no hard proof that they were actually faked, and in most of the clips at least some enemies tried to kill him, so they definitely don't look obviously faked. Compared to clips that I know are set up, Reeps' clips look legit, but compared to clips I know are legit, they look fishy. I will get back to this point later in the video. Really, the only Reeps clip I like in this video is the Scrapyard Inter 5 on. Of course, Reeps' clips are only half of the video, and that will mean that the other half, Darkness' clips, is still amazing, right? That's what we thought at first, but we later found out that this was also not the case. Darkness' clips from Ascendancy V3 started to appear in videos from various other English Modern Warfare 2 players. It was later confirmed that Darkness had never actually made a comeback and that he had given three other people his account info so that they could hit clips for him. These players, Liam JTel, JF and MaxPX are all top tier players, which is why Darkness had such an unbelievable amount of amazing clips in AV3. The only clip hit by the original X Darkness was the Strike 5 multi. This video was not actually a dual tash, but a 5 man montage. Ascendancy V3 was the best Reaps video ever on release, yet of all his montages, it aged by far the worst. My favorite part of the montage today is the final song of the video, Promise Me from Dead by April. It really feels like Reaps is talking to his audience directly if you listen to the lyrics. In other words, this is our final video. It might not be the best video we've made, but promise me to look back at us as a time in your life you enjoyed, aka the original Modern Warfare 2 sniping days. This whole event begged another question though. If Darkness had been hiding the fact that he had passed his account info over to other people and multiple people were hitting the clips on his account, what about Reaps? Theories about the real identity of iReeps are as old as the hills, but they really started to pick up steam again after Ascendancy V3. After all, we literally did not know anything about this guy. There was no name or face associated with the gamertag. We didn't know how old he was, or even what he sounded like. I can't overstate how uncommon it is to give absolutely zero information about yourself. Even if you don't advertise your personal info and identity on your social media, you will at least share these things with your friends. But not Reeps. He was completely anonymous and didn't even speak to his friends that he regularly played with. Really after his prime, he barely ever interacted with anyone, in any form, disappearing for months or years at a time, despite the fact that everyone, newer and older players, idolized him immensely. 
I would say he is the only player that is practically universally respected and admired. Because of this lack of information, a lot of theories about who was behind the accounts have appeared. I will briefly cover the most popular ones. iReeps is MaxBX When someone brings the topic about the identity of iReeps up, MaxBX is the name that is brought up most often. The theory is either that Max was Reeps all along, or that Max inherited the account around the AV3 days and has been hitting the clips ever since. Max VX is a well-known UK player from the competitive sniper days who also played public matches a lot. On old competitive sniper forums, people used the name Max VX and I Reeps interchangeably, referring to the same person. Sadly, those forums have since been deleted. People that have played with him all agree that he is one of the toughest snipers they have ever faced in game. Despite his apparent skill and the fact that he did record his gameplay, Max never made a single video, leading many people to believe that this was because he was already uploading videos on his main account. Moreover, Max barely interacts with anyone, which is of course reminiscent of Reeps. What's also interesting is that in the videos that Darkness uploaded in 2013, he is always playing with either iReeps or MaxPX, but not in a single instance with both of them. This is the only theory that Reeps himself has directly addressed and denied because of the sheer number of people making this claim. But I personally seriously doubt that Max had anything to do with the iReeps account. It just makes no sense to me that Reeps would have a separate account that he would use a lot that he couldn't use any clips from. And Reeps had plenty of secret accounts to play on if he didn't want to be followed around everywhere. Max also hit most clips on the Darkness account for AV3, so there was simply no way that he would have the time to hit all the Reeps clips as well. I Reeps is X Darkness. Darkness being I Reeps used to be the most popular theory back in the day. Darkness was never very active on his channel, so at the time it wasn't impossible that he had created the iReeps persona to gain attention by pretending to be a girl. In reality though, this theory is just absurd. In plenty of clips you can see Reeps and Darkness playing together, and both have their unique history in the Call of Duty community, so this is simply ruled out. iReeps is multiple people. The most convincing theory is that multiple people were behind the iReeps account. Part of the reason why this is so convincing is that multiple people that were around when Reeps first started uploading videos came out and claimed that it was indeed multiple people playing on the accounts all along, including iBlackouts and Zero Grizz, the people that iReeps was originally inspired by. Here because Kitpa on Twitter said the real identity of iReeps so all I'm really gonna say about this is is I respect those guys as far as gamers their talent when it comes to hitting clips and stuff like that it's they're amazing uh, as individuals personalities on a personal level I can't stand them so I will just leave it there and I may do another commentary if you guys want me to do one as far as my opinion on I reaps I know a lot of people doesn't know exactly what happened there and what all went into it, it kind of went underneath the bridge years ago, and that's just kind of where I left it, because I could really care less, but it seems like there's always somebody that's asking me what my opinion was on it, so maybe I'll leave that one for a different commentary. Anyway. <laughs> if anyone would know, it would be them. This also explained how Reeps could pump out so many ridiculous videos during that time. A wide variety of names have been brought up as suggestions for the people behind this account, all of them very skilled Modern Warfare 2 players from the UK. Again however, I don't think this theory is true. Multiple people making an account to create a persona does happen from time to time, but in 2009 I seriously doubt that anyone would do this. Also, when people do create a so-called alias, the truth always comes out, and the raw gameplay from the account is always spread around. In 12 years, not a single one of Reeps' clips has been leaked, and not a single person has provided a shred of evidence that more than one person was behind it all. Reeps himself always gets very offended when this is brought up, which I think is a bit silly, but he does bring up a good point that if it was anyone but him, it would have come out by now. I've heard about a thousand different iterations of Reeps' theories by now, all from people who were completely convinced of what they were claiming. 
When following these claims up though, it never, not in a single instance, led to any credible information. It has become clear to me that all these claims are based on hearsay and speculation, and that in reality nobody truly knows who is the person behind the iReaps gamer tag. Which is why I personally believe that iReaps is just iReaps, not some secret society of snipers or whatever, which is a conclusion that more people are starting to come around to. Though of course, this is also just speculation. The mystery around his gaming identity remains in the open, and it isn't impossible that it is a collection of people playing on the account, and that the identity of these players is just a closely guarded secret. In the years following the release of Ascendancy V3, Reaps remained present in the community. While he never made a comeback for a newly released Call of Duty, he never abandoned Modern Warfare 2 and made a small Modern Warfare 2 video or two every year, usually at the end of summer. But this too came to an end, and after the video he uploaded in September of 2016, he finally quit uploading, and his channel remained completely dormant. 2017 was the first year since he started where he didn't upload a single video. It was very understandable that he was done with the game for good now. There were no more clips for him to hit that he hadn't hit already, and the montage making side of the game had undergone significant changes. This time it wasn't just the standards for montages that had improved, but over the years the multiplayer aspect of Modern Warfare 2 had turned into a completely different game. Modern Warfare 2 had been out for over 8 years, so the only people left on the game were either snipers or devout tryhards going for nukes. At this point, everyone you ran into was extremely familiar with the game, and casual players were very far and few in between. As a result, it was a lot harder to do well in games and hit clips. It was therefore safe to assume that even if Reaps did return to the game, he would be overshadowed by his competition, because he was simply used to playing what was essentially an entirely different game. Which is why it was seriously shocking when on June 22nd, 2018, after the channel had been vacant for almost two years, Reaps uploaded the trailer for Ascendancy V4. I think most people were in disbelief that this was actually happening, and the hype around this event was once again immense. Luckily, this time we didn't have to wait very long for the actual montage to drop, since on July 7, 2018, iReaps uploaded Ascendancy V4.
In terms of clips, I think it surpassed what anyone was expecting. About half of the clips consisted of the best clips from the videos uploaded between 2013 and 2016, and then the other half was all recent clips he hit while playing on secret accounts. Like I said before, Modern Warfare 2 had turned into a completely different game, yet the quality of the clips Reaps hit was so ridiculous that nobody could now argue that Reaps was overrated and only a good player for a small period of time. In this favela clip for example, Reaps gets a 5 on screen and then before even reloading hits another quad feed in a completely random spot on favela, which is one of the best clips ever hit on the game. The video is just full of amazing clips, like this opening 5 on in Free For All. The clip that closes the video is also a miraculous clip. Up to this point, Reaps had never hit a 5 on screen times 3, which to be fair is a rare clip that most people never hit. So it was honestly shocking to see him hit this clip. The second ever 5 on screen times 6 hits on this 8 year old game. The clips in this video and the fact that he was still able to dominate games truly cemented him as one of the best players the franchise had ever seen. In terms of style, it is perhaps the most interesting entry in the Ascendancy series, since it doesn't have a typical Reap soundtrack and has a very simple edit. And because of this, the video wasn't immediately loved by everyone. But since it has come out, I've really come to appreciate it. The calmer and more mellow music really suits the current state of the game, which is now a wasteland compared to what it once was. Overall, it is my second favorite Ascendancy, behind only the first one. The reception to this video was really amazing to see. A lot of YouTubers, with millions of subscribers, as well as some of the most respected snipers from the community, had commented on this video, paying their respects to this person they once looked up to. Many other people commented on the video, thanking Reaps for making so many memorable videos and showing their admiration. Like this comment. I Reaps has always been the person I've aspired to be, never chasing money or fame, but instead stayed in the shadows. When first introduced, I was 13 years old when I started Modern Warfare 2. I was very good and stepped into the 1v1 leaderboards years later, playing against some of the best before it shut down. In the 1v1 community, for the first time I met many players that were even better than me. But of course there weren't many that compared to the precision in iReaps' gameplay. At that time I watched iReaps and to this day I know nothing more about him other than that he's a very, very skilled player. I'm 21 years old now so I'd have to assume iReaps is nearing, if not in his mid-twenties. I just need to know who this humble, amazingly skilled, anonymous person is. I Reaps, who are you? Despite all this, I do have a concession to make about this video. A bunch of clips were really old and were clips that were originally going to be in Ascendancy V3. But Darkness of course joined the video, so Reaps left out some of his best clips and in his words saved them up as a foundation for a next big video. These clips were hit in the same time period as a bunch of clips that are in my opinion very sketchy, and this whole story makes it even less believable to me that these clips are legit. When you make a montage you go all out and use all your best clips. You never leave any good clips out in the event you make another montage, especially not if that montage is your final ever video. The only reason I can think of why you would keep some of your best clips hidden and use generally less impressive clips is because the clips aren't legitimate in some way and you don't want to arouse any suspicion. Of course in 2018 most people had forgotten about most of the AV3 clips, so using the clips now was more safe. 
Although I must admit, some of these unseen AV3 cliffs starting in AV4 do not look set up at all, and seem completely legitimate. So why Reaps didn't just use them in AV3 seriously does not make any sense to me whatsoever. But like I said, this is only a relatively small portion of the clips hit in this video. Over the last two years, Reap still uploaded a few videos with all his leftover clips from over the years, but it was clear that this time his story had finally concluded. Modern Warfare 2 is now 10 years old and currently pretty much unplayable on Xbox, so at this point I don't think anyone is making a return to the game. It has simply reached the end of its lifespan. It's been almost 12 years since iReaps made his YouTube channel and shocked the world with his montages. He reached unprecedented levels of fame back in the day, and the montages he made have made a considerable impact and have been watched by millions of people. But he is no saint. He spent the better part of three years maintaining a false identity, which undeniably played a significant role in his early rise to fame. The internet has seldomly seen such a formidable player, yet also such a controversial character. Of course there will always be players who are in a league of their own, and therefore admired by many. But Reaps is practically worshipped by people today. To the point where some players have based their entire online persona off of him, and have made nearly identical videos to his. The fact that many believe that it is actually a team of players makes it so that Reaps isn't even regarded as a person anymore, but rather some faceless entity that roams the lobbies of Modern Warfare 2 to wreak havoc on other snipers. In a community that can be very divided, virtually every single person looks up to Reaps. The legacy that I Reaps has left behind is unlike anything I've ever seen. It is without a doubt the most remarkable and intriguing gaming legacy of the past decade, and I Reaps is undeniably the most legendary player in the history of the franchise.